I picked up this, uh, after I said I wasn't going to, I picked up the Steam controller. And, uh, figured I'd do a review of it now that I've been using it for freaking days. Um, hours and hours and hours. Okay, so I'm going to start this by saying, if you just want to pick up a controller, like an Xbox 360 controller, and go. It's a Steam controller. It's a big Steam pile. Steaming pile of shit. And you should not even bother watching this video, because that's your rating. It's garbage. Now... Okay, but, and I didn't understand what they meant when they said this, because I just thought people were like, spend some time with it to force yourself to like it, you know, uh, it, it will be good, because it sounded like they were just forcing themselves to like it due to the fact that they paid 50 bucks for it, and when the, what they mean by, you know, if you spend some time with it, there's not only you know, a learning curve of new controls to use, but there's also a software learning curve, and with those, so that software learning curve uh, includes a lot of um, new mechanics and things that you have to learn how to use to master in order to play your games in a way that ends up being a lot better experience than playing these games with the Xbox 360 controllers and such. Um, and there's some really fun things to do with the controller that, um, you know, that, you know, you just couldn't do with an Xbox 360 controller. And some of the stuff, I don't even know if you could do it with a mouse and keyboard. Uh, some of which includes, like, with this, all right, it has a gyroscope, right? You can map whatever you want to this. So, say you wanted to steer. Right in a, in a racing game uh, with something like Dirt 3, which is what I, I played, I can steer the controller, I can map the gyroscope to the you know as an analog stick to work in Dirt 3, and then have it so um, the left and right triggers, basically when you hold the left or, or right triggers, that's when the gyroscope will be enabled. So when you let go of it, the gyroscope will not be enabled, so this way it doesn't affect menus and things like that. But then you can steer the controller like a, a racing wheel. But then you can also do, what you can also do is if you don't feel like steering that, you can also have these back paddles mapped as regular kind of gas and, and brake, and then you could use the analog stick like normal. So there's a lot of yeah, there is a lot of heavy customization. So if you like being able to heavily customize your controls um, in that way, that's cool. There's also the trackpad mode, which is great. I'm uh, not the track, but the trackball mode, which is actually really good for first-person shooters. Um, however, it's something you have to learn how to control. So when you throw the trackpad, you have to learn how to have it. Uh, kind of turn properly, turn as much as you need it to turn, and stop it kind of on a dime. Um, and basically, so when you do that, you have to learn how to do it properly. But you also have, will have to go into the software, fine-tune the controls so that the sen sensitivity is correct. There's a few other settings you have to set. There's like this offset kind of thing because... Your thumb doesn't, you know, swipe at a perfect straight angle. You have, like, this angle that you're going to do this or something, and you have to set that to be correct so that you don't end up, you know, spinning off into the sky or at the ground or something. So you have to kind of get that correct. And there's other things that you kind of have to do to, to just fine-tune your controls properly so that when you do throw the trackball thing it's not going to like spin off into the ground or something or go too fast or too slow. Um, so then there's, you know, like you have the sensitivity when you're just moving like this. And if you need a little more to, uh, of a push to turn around, you can throw the trackball. So this way you can actually uh, move this and be slow enough that you have precision aiming. And then you can throw it again if you need to turn so you can be a little faster. Uh, it's kind of complicated, and I don't think I'm really explaining it very well, but um, 
and that's that. <laughs> that's the best I can do. Um, when I was using this, I did not find it to be very uncomfortable to hold, but I could see how somebody may have a little bit of an issue. I think I had a controller which had a similar kind of uh, curve to it, and I did get used to that. Um, so I don't even remember which what that was, but I remember having something where the where the the controls were kind of like that. So I guess I got used to it from that. Uh, some things I, I think are bad about it. Okay, so I'm gonna get something that's that I think can't really be fixed much. You can do the best you can do, but it's not really a. All right, so the D-pad, if you have a game that relies heavily on a D-pad, obviously this is basically the fucking worst D-pad I have ever used in my entire fucking life. Worse than the 360 D-pad. This D-pad is not a D-pad. It's a touch thing that I, I don't even know why, because why they bothered with a touchpad over here, because I don't use it as a touchpad. Uh, I mostly use it as a D-pad. Yeah, D-pad, that's mostly what I use as. So they should have made a proper D-pad instead and maybe I don't know something <laughs> maybe they could have had like a d-pad pop out of here or so I don't know what the fuck maybe they could have had a, a like a, a d-pad in here and then maybe you could have uh, released a, a, a proper d-pad that maybe popped out like this so when you want to use it as a d-pad but it's also touch sensitive I don't know something but it could have really used a proper d-pad so but I do know how to use some of those games with analog, or probably all of those games with analog sticks that just prefer a D-pad. Um, some people have actually come up with some cool ideas, like they made touch-sensitive uh, buttons, so like they would have A mapped here, B, you know, uh, Y, X, and instead of pressing it down like that, depressing it, you would just tap it, and then it actually could give you uh, haptic feedback, and it feels kind of like you're pressing a button. I thought that was kind of cool. I don't know that it was the best way of controlling things, but, you know, you could do it with the D-pad so you don't have to press it down. It's a little rough pressing this, you know, so... A lot of times you try to press this, you end up pressing another button back here. Hit this, or hit the paddle. So... That's annoying. <laughs> the paddles are cool, though. Um, if you're going to play a first-person shooter, which you have a melee attack for, I would definitely recommend mapping the melee to the paddles and not to this. Uh, other people have also said this. You end up pressing this and then you melee randomly, which happens on controllers, but it's worse on this. And then you get killed. <laughs> so that kind of blows. Um, let's see, what else? Um, the analog stick is a fucking analog stick. What's to say about it? It's an analog stick. Uh, the, but the, the really, the, the big thing is, oh, I was playing Minecraft with this, it worked really well. I didn't have to use the trackball mode, because I don't need to spin around really fast. But, it was really cool to use the gyroscope with this for mining, because it was insanely accurate, and it, I found it to be really fun to use, where you just basically point at part of a tree, you know, and you just mine the tree by, like, lifting your hand and pointing at things and whatever. And that was cool. I was able to enable it so that it, when I hold this paddle right here, it enables the uh, gyroscope mouse, and then I can just move the controller around and use this to, to mine things. So that, that was cool, and the mouse was very accurate when selecting stuff in Minecraft and all that fun stuff. Um... Just, uh, so I think it's kind of important to point out that I am mostly a keyboard I'm not a keyboard. No, I'm mostly a controller player. Uh, I can play with a keyboard and mouse. In fact, I think the first video game I ever played was on a keyboard and mouse. I'm an old fuck. And uh, basically, that's how that works. But I mostly play games on, on controllers, and I really prefer them, even if <laughs> even if mouse uh, controls give you super a, you know amounts of accuracy or whatever the fuck. But I always force myself to play with controllers. But I like this because... I can have the accuracy, not the accuracy of a mouse, it doesn't give you that full accuracy of your whole hand and like you know, all this other stuff, but it gives you better accuracy than a, than a um, thumbstick. So that's, that's nice, there's no like weird dead zone thing where you have to like push a certain amount to start moving or anything, it just, it's one to one, 
you just move your thumb and whatever you see on the screen moves with it uh, to the best of your knowledge. Of course, with that little slight delay that controllers and everything have that most people don't notice unless it's really bad. Um, so yeah, uh, the, a couple things. Uh, here's okay. So the analog stick obviously and the buttons are like really far into the controller, kind of like a, not, they're worse, it's worse than the, the Wii class, uh, Wii U class, uh, Pro Controller, the Wii U Pro Controller. Um, actually, I could, I go get one. My dusty ass Wii, Wii Pro Controller, and actually, I think I spilled coffee on it. <laughs> Anyways, you can see, Wii Pro Controller, uh, the buttons are actually further apart and they're still hard to kind of use. And the analog stick placement, of course, is the same as basically the D-pad placement on the Wii Pro Controller. Wii Pro Controller. Um, so, you know, they're actually close, further in, so it makes it even harder. Uh, of course, they had to make room for the track pads. Maybe there's a way you could do it <laughs> um, that's decent better than what they did. There's always uh, room, there's definitely room for a redesign. Um, but yeah. Uh, there's definitely room for, for just uh, something, a redesign simply to make the, the controller look good. It looks ridiculous. Uh, it looks like an owl. It's not, yeah. So anyways, of course they have the back. Pops out. And there's, if I can get it out. I thought I cracked it for a second. <laughs> it's just a design on the back. There. Alright, so yeah, you, that back pops off. The, the battery's going here. Uh, fun. It goes right back on. And uh, I've been playing it for hours and the battery hasn't died. It's not a DS4. <laughs> well, luckily. You don't have to buy a battery pack for that. Um, so, so far, I gotta say... The controller is actually one of the best controllers I've ever freaking used. For me. For my interests and needs and wants. For me, I feel this is actually one of the best controllers I've ever used. Due to its uh, customizability. Is that a word? Somebody just said that and I think they said it wrong. It's exactly what I said and then they corrected themselves with the proper word and I can't think of the word. I mean, it has a lot of customization, I think. Um... <laughs> And let's see, yeah, that's a great thing. The, the ability to use the gyroscope for whatever you want. Um, I haven't tried it in emulators. I want to try it in emulators. I don't know that it's going to work very well, but we'll see. Maybe I can fine tune it to get it to work properly with like PlayStation 1 um, uh, racing games or something. Um, but yeah, I'm using this with the Steam Link uh, to get my games on the television and stuff. And I actually was going to originally put my Steam Link in my bedroom so that I could stream games to my bedroom and not have to, like, have another Steam, uh, have another, uh, what the fuck is it, uh, Shield TV and, and put it in the bedroom because it's only 50 bucks, I can have another, you know, I can get my games in, the, in my bedroom for, for 50 bucks and then have the set-top box out in the living room, but I don't think I want to now because of this controller, um... At first, I was very frustrated with the controller, honestly. I thought it was terrible. I even put an, a, a review on Amazon saying this was crap and that people were had a screw loose for actually saying it was decent. And then I changed that to like a four-star review. And took that back because, yeah, I understand now why it takes so long to get used to because there's so much stuff you have to do, unlike a, like an Xbox 360 controller where you just plug and play, this has a lot more to it that you have to do. And hopefully soon there will be some some more community mappings and things like that that were, will be better. Right now the community mappings are probably the best ones I've used, but they're still not there. And I normally have to fine tune them. And the other problem is the fact that everybody's different, but you know, I guess it doesn't matter if you picked up an Xbox 360 controller and whatever was it was back to work for you then there should be a, the ability to have that working here as well. Um, you just need 
to have people learn the software better, learn the controller better, and uh, put up some new mappings that will function very well. And uh, then you won't have to spend so much time fiddling with this. And, uh, you know, once you learn how to fiddle with it too, then you don't have to spend as much time fiddling with it for the next game. And some games just work. It's not all games you have to sit there forever, like, fiddling with it. It's just a lot of times shooters, first-person shooters, are going to be the ones that are going to give you the most problems. They all, a lot of times, work differently, so you have to have individual um, setups for those and such. But, for the most part, I gotta say, this is like literally the best controller I've ever used. I didn't think I was gonna like it. I thought it was gonna be on eBay. <laughs> um, and I do like it. Uh, so, uh, I definitely recommend it if you are looking for a controller that has lots of customization, um, has better accuracy than thumbsticks, and if you're willing to have the patience to deal with it. Um, but if you just want something, pick up and play, um, and just forget about it, get the Xbox 360 controller or whatever with like a wireless dongle or a wired 360 controller because, honestly, this is gonna make you want to pull your fucking head off and throw it in the fucking shitter. So, yeah. That's that, so. That's my review. I'm gonna be doing some gameplay with this. Um, uh, showing... Some stuff, and I hope to try to show some software stuff and whatever. Well, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.